So now we're in a position where we can begin to talk about how the equilibrium constant for a given reaction will depend on the temperature. Certainly we expect the equilibrium constant should depend on temperature. If I have a reaction and I do the reaction at 298 Kelvin and then I change the temperature to some different temperature, we certainly uh, expect that the balance of reactants and products will shift. So we can start with the expression for how the equilibrium constant depends on uh, other thermodynamic properties like the free energy of the reaction. So we've seen that the Kp is equal to e to the minus delta G over RT uh, times this P naught to the delta nu factor, which makes sure that the units work out right. If I write that expression in a slightly more uh, compact form, I can just say that the equilibrium constant is equal to e to the minus delta G over RT, where in this case the K that I'm talking about is either Kp divided by this uh, factor that takes uh, the units of pressure into account, or if I prefer to be working in some different units, uh, Kn or Kc or Kx or some different equilibrium constant, I've got some other collection of uh, conversion factors that I'll lump in with this equilibrium constant. But whichever way I'm thinking about it, some version of this unitless equilibrium constant is equal to e to the minus delta G over RT, which is also a unitless quantity. So using that expression, if I take the log, log K is equal to minus delta G over RT. What I want to understand is the temperature dependence. So let's take the temperature derivative and see how the left side and the right side change as the temperature changes. So the derivative of log K with respect to temperature must be equal to the derivative of minus delta G over RT with respect to temperature. The minus one over R has no temperature dependence. The G and the T, however, could both be changing with the temperature changes. So I need to take the derivative of delta G over T with respect to temperature. But that looks familiar. We know the Gibbs-Helmholtz expression from earlier in the semester has told us that the derivative of a Gibbs free energy over temperature with respect to temperature is always minus the enthalpy over T squared. So the right-hand side is minus 1 over R minus H over T squared. So the result is the change in the log of the equilibrium constant as I change the temperature is equal to the change in the enthalpy of the reaction over RT squared. That expression, I'll go ahead and put that one in a box, that expression is called the Van Hoff equation. So that's a pretty important expression for being able to predict how the equilibrium constant changes as the temperature changes. Uh, notice that what it says is the only thing the equilibrium de constant depends on is not delta G per se, but delta H. Uh, so if delta H is positive, if it's an endothermic reaction, then um, the right side of this equation is positive, so the equilibrium constant is going up as the temperature increases. On the other hand, if delta H is negative, if it's an exothermic reaction that gives off heat as it proceeds, then the right-hand side is negative and the equilibrium constant will decrease as the temperature goes up. We can learn essentially the same fact in a different form if we go back and start with um, this equation again, K is e to the minus delta G over RT. If I take the log of both sides of that equation, I'm sorry, don't, uh, yeah, go ahead and take the log, and then uh, log k is minus delta g over rt. If I bring the rt over to the left-hand side, I'll get this expression, which uh, might sound familiar. Minus rt log k is equal to delta g. But we know delta g is enthalpy minus t times the entropy. So rewrite the right-hand side as delta h minus t delta s, and then bring the rt back over to the right side, and I've got l and k is equal to delta H divided by minus RT and minus T delta S divided by minus RT. So the negative sign and the T cancel and I've just got delta S over R with the positive sign. So notice that I've got an expression describing how the equilibrium constant or its log depends on the temperature or 1 over the temperature and it looks like some constants times 1 over temperature plus some other constants. In other words this quantity log k is a linear function of 1 over t. It has the form y equals slope times uh, independent variable plus uh, intercept. 
So what that means is from an experimental point of view, if you want to understand how an equilibrium constant changes with temperature, often what you can do is, uh, and I've forgotten to show you what I'm plotting, plotting on this axis, but if you plot the log of the equilibrium constant, as a function of one over the temperature, do the reaction at, let's say, 298 Kelvin. Measure the equilibrium constant, plot log of the equilibrium constant versus one over the temperature. Do it at a higher temperature, so one over T will be a lower number. The equilibrium constant will be some different value. Do that for multiple different temperatures. Measure the, the equilibrium constant at multiple different temperatures, and you have points on a graph. If you fit those points with a straight line, this equation tells you is the log of the equilibrium constant when plotted versus 1 over t has a slope that's equal to minus delta h over r. So the slope of these uh, points on the log k versus 1 over t graph is negative the enthalpy of the reaction divided by r. So for the points that I've sketched here, because the points move downhill, log k is decreasing as I plot 1 over t, that means negative delta H over R has a negative value. And for this particular example, the delta H of the reaction would be positive because of the slope of this graph. So that would be uh, for an endothermic reaction. If, on the other hand, my reaction was exothermic and delta H was negative, then the slope of the curve would be upside down. I'd have a positive slope instead of a negative slope. So we can tell from the slope of this graph whether it's an endothermic or an exothermic reaction, and we can tell from the numerical value of the slope exactly what the value of delta H is. And also, if we're interested, if we extrapolate this curve back and find the intercept, then that intercept is going to be the value of delta S over R, again, as given by this uh, linear form of the equation. So summarizing some of what we've just said, an endothermic and an exothermic reaction are qualitatively different in how the equilibrium constant behaves. So we can see that for an endothermic reaction, when the delta H for the reaction is positive, both the Van't Hoff equation and this linearized form that we've just talked about show that the equilibrium constant goes up as the temperature goes up for an endothermic reaction. What that means is when the equilibrium constant goes up, the uh, remember, the equilibrium constant is products divided by reactants, so the way to make that number larger is to have more products and fewer reactants. So what that means is the reaction shifts forwards when the temperature goes up. When I heat up an endothermic reaction, I drive it closer towards products and away from reactants. An exothermic reaction works exactly the opposite. Since delta H is less than zero, the Van't Hoff equation and the linearized form show us that the equilibrium constant decreases as the temperature increases. And again, since the equilibrium constant is products over reactants, the way to make the equilibrium constant decrease is to have fewer products and more reactants. So the reaction has to shift backwards, decreasing the amount of products and increasing the amount of reactants when I increase the temperature. Both of those facts agree with what we understand uh, from Le Chatelier's principle. In its uh, simpler form, Le Chatelier's principle says if I have an endothermic reaction, one that takes heat to proceed. So A uh, plus heat is needed to form uh, B. Then if I increase the temperature, adding more heat to the reaction, I've added a reactant, and so that drives the equilibrium forwards. But if I have an exothermic reaction where A re turns into B and liberates heat, then when I increase the temperature, adding heat into the reaction, I've added a product, and so that drives the equilibrium backwards. So again, what Le Chatelier says in a fairly simple form about the uh, shift in the equilibrium constant when the temperature changes is exactly the same as we've just determined uh, using the Van Hoff expression. The advantage is, number one, now we know why this is true, what thermodynamic forces uh, cause the equilibrium constant to increase or decrease as the temperature changes. And number two, we have a much more quantitative expression. So if we want to, we can calculate numerically exactly how much the equilibrium constant is going to change when the temperature changes.